Hi guys, it's me, Trudy Lee. I'm back, finally. Believe it or not, I did make y'all a couple of videos while I was on the road, but they got messed up and I didn't get to send them. Um, in the middle of me talking, they, my computer went out and I had all kinds of things happen. So, you know, it's hard when you're on the road and I'm not, you know, very techie. So <laughs> I couldn't splice it together or anything and it was just a mess. So I said, oh, well, I guess I'm not supposed to make a video. I need to focus on my husband and our vacation, even though I wanted to. I was making a, a video before that uh, Dorian hurricane, before it even became a hurricane. It was a tropical storm. Um, they said that it was going to hit Puerto Rico. And I just wanted to do a video on the hurricane, you know. I wanted to do a reading. So that's what I did. And I'm, I'll tell you what I saw now. I mean, it's past tense, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you all anyway. When I was uh, trying to connect and the images that I got, when it was going to Puerto Rico was I saw a lady, she was standing there in the wind. She had a dress on and it was billowing and it was really windy, windy, windy. And I saw her, you know, just standing like in, in the wind. And then she goes and lays down on a hammock. So that told me Puerto Rico, it's going to get a lot of wind, but they can relax. So I told my husband, I made the video, part of it. And I told him, nothing's going to happen to Puerto Rico. Everything's going to be fine. They can relax. They're just going to get some wind and that's it. So I I didn't hear anything happening there. So I don't know. I think they were okay. I, I wasn't really following the news very much because we were out every day just doing stuff, you know. So we didn't have too much time. Um, there wasn't a TV in our room. I did have my laptop. But, uh, you know, we just watched it. When we would go lay down just before we'd fall asleep, we'd watch it for a little bit. Anyway, so then I, um, after I've been home, I have, you know, asked Spirit and I've gotten a little information in the last few days, you know, before the hurricane got to the Bahamas, I kept saying, is it going to hit Florida? Is it going to hit Florida? And I kept seeing, I kept getting uh, a glancing, a Glancing, yeah, a glancing off. I don't know. It glances off Florida, and that's what I kept hearing. This it's just going to get a a glancing blow. That's what it was, a glancing blow. And I kept I kept seeing it like it would hit Florida just a tiny bit and then turn. So I don't know. It hasn't hasn't turned yet as of today. Today is September the third. It's Tuesday, September the third. Uh, it is going like one mile an hour. They said it's super, super slow. I can't believe how slow it is. Man, just get the hell out of there. So I don't know. Maybe it's better. That way everybody can be prepared for wherever it's going to go. But to me, it doesn't go to Florida. I asked and it said it's a glancing blow. It just goes at the edge and then turns away. And I saw it. I can see it myself in my mind that it just goes straight to Florida and then it turns. I don't know. We'll see because it's getting closer and we'll see what happens. So that's what I that's what I saw actually a couple of nights ago when I was doing a reading uh, for myself. I was just trying to find out what was going on. And that's what I got. OK, so uh, what I want to do is do a reading on Trump for September and see what he's going to do, what's going on with him. I also. Um, I did a little bit of meditation on the economy. I have a little sheet here. I did that right before I turned the camera on. And this is the what I'm feeling with the economy. And then I'll do Trump's reading. I'm feeling that uh, the economy is going to get a little bit worse. It's going to, it's not going to be as good. It's not as robust. And I feel like it's doing a downturn in, in the future. That's what's going to happen. And so I've got some guidance here that I got from Spirit that I'm going to pass along to y'all. <clears throat> uh, Spirit was telling me, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat's going out. 
invest in your local farmer because I was asking, well, how can how can we uh, help everybody? What can we do to help everybody in uh, economical, challenging times? You know, so said invest in your local farmer. Um, people grow things themselves, you know, and I know it's going to be fall and winter and all that, but th things grow in the fall too. You know, we get all our apples and things like that. So there's lots of lots of greens that grow um, in the fall too. Lots of lettuces and things like that, right? Cabbage. I don't know that much about farming, but I know something, things like that grow in the fall. So invest in your local farmer. So go to Go to your local farmer's market. Help those people out. That's helping your local economy. Do what you can to help your economy, you know, your, the people that live in your neighborhood. Help out those farmers and everything. Support local businesses. And also, you know, when you're going to, um, you buy at a farmer's market, you're getting a healthier product. You're getting, uh, more organic foods and everything. So it's much better for you. And that's where we need to be. Every single food that you put in your mouth ought to be organic. You know, on our grocer, grocers should not be allowed to put non-organic vegetables and fruits, you know, out for sale. Everything should be organic. Why shouldn't it should all be organic? Of course, of course. We're inundated with pesticides and chemicals, you know. So anyway, that's a good way to help your local economy. Um, also, I've heard about this before and Spirit told me this. I should have looked it up before I turned on the camera, but I didn't. Uh, there's little groups on Facebook, I think, or I don't know, check check your local um I don't know, your local area, your neighborhood, they may have something online for your neighborhood where people trade services, you know, that's a really, really good way to save money and help other people out and help your community and um, just trade services. I heard about this a long, long time ago, I remember, but Spirit was just telling me that's one other way that when the economy is on a downturn and things are getting difficult, look into those kind of, it's a, a group, a circle that you can join and you can donate your service and get a service. So it's really good. I like that. And remember, there's going to be friends and family that are worse off than you, really. So if you're able to help out your family and friends, help them, support them. We all need each other. Okay. So we're going to maybe go through some difficulties, a difficult time, but you know, just know we can get through this. Uh, there's a new election coming up and things are going to get better and better and better. So I think they have to get worse so we can get Trump out of there. So we're going to see things get worse, but they'll, they're will they going to turn around and get better. So don't worry about it. Uh, and just remember that the energy that you put out will come back to you. So be loving, kind and helpful to your family, friends, neighbors, and it's going to come back to you. So that's how we can all uh, uplift the economy for ourselves. Okay. So that's what I got on that. I just wanted to tell it to you. All right. So, um, now when I connect with Trump, <laughs> it's so funny. I see, uh, the first thing I saw was a screw and then it turned into a drill. <laughs> And I feel like uh, it's growing bigger and bigger and bigger. So he's going to really get screwed over. And it's a huge, huge drill. So yay. I hope he does. I hope they're going to screw him over good. That's what it looks like to me. So, But as I see this drill, I see a big person, somebody big standing in front of Trump protecting him. So I guess, you know, the Democrats are trying to screw him. I mean, he's screwing himself, really. It's not really the Democrats screwing him. He's screwing himself because of the person that he is, the choices that he's made. But anyway, I see someone standing in front of him. Uh, they're protecting him. That's what it is. They're standing in front of him and protecting him. I think this is Barr. Um, and he is successful. He's, he's like magic. 
I don't know how he does it, but he's like magic. He He's continuing to protect Trump and he's able to do it. Okay. But then I see Trump and Trump's not looking very well. His head looks tight. I don't know. It's weird. It's almost like his hair is standing up and getting tighter. Almost like, oh, it looks like this is what it looks like, y'all. This is so funny. Girls will know what this means. You know, what? like if you if you had a rubber band and you put it on your head and it starts to roll off and get tighter and tighter, that's what I see. I see it's getting tighter and tighter on his head, you know. So I feel like, to me, this is like blood pressure. Like his blood pressure is getting higher and higher. And he doesn't look good. He's very, very anxious. And he's holding his head in his hands and that band is getting tighter on his head. <laughs> Yay. That's so mean, I know, but, you know, he deserves it. He really does. He deserves it. Um, will Trump leave office this month? I don't think so. No, I, I'm seeing a pumpkin. <laughs> I see a pumpkin. And it's funny. It doesn't look like a happy, good pumpkin. It's a pumpkin and it's got some kind of like goo dripping all down it. I don't know. It's, it looks really nasty. So something happens. I think it's in November or the fall. He might be sick. That, that's a sick pumpkin, you know. It's a sick looking pumpkin. Oh, and pumpkin also orange Trump. That's weird. Okay. Hmm. I didn't think about that. So maybe Trump is getting sick. Wow. So maybe Trump is getting sick and uh, in the fall, in November. So maybe we'll be, we'll be hearing about his uh, illness. <laughs> Poor Trump. I, I don't wish anything negative on him. I really don't. I just wish he'd go away. I really do. I wish he'd go away, go away, go away. I know y'all do too. Okay. All right, so let's, I have the card spread out here. Let me tell you, let me show you the first card that I have for him. This is uh, Nine of Wands. Yeah, he's got, this month, battles ahead. He's going to be fighting one after the other, after the other, after the other. And he is exhausted. And that may be what, what is bringing on his illness, because he's fighting one battle after the other, after the other. Because, you know, he's getting subpoenaed for this, that, and the other. They're trying to get his taxes. He knows they're going to be coming out. Sooner or later, they're going to come out. You know, he knows it. And I'm sure that's stressing him out. You know, that's why his blood pressure is so high. So we're going to see him, you know, fighting one battle after the other. And it's really causing him illness. It really is. So he's getting sick, not feeling well, exhausted from all this. But oh, crossing over, look what he gets. Nine of Pentacles. So it doesn't matter how sick he is, he's still, you know, living in the lap of luxury. He still is going to be able to go to uh, Mar-a-Lago, go golfing, do whatever he pleases. He's still enjoying his life, basically, the way he likes to. But it's, it is a lonely existence for him because nobody really likes him. Okay. Above that situation is... Um, the Four of Cups, he, they're talking to him, y'all. They are talking to him. People are um, telling him, hey, you should do this or that. They're just offering him things, and he is not interested. He is really not interested. So he's getting offers he don't like, and he don't want to hear. But they're talking to him. They're telling him. I'm pretty sure they're saying, hey, they're going to get your taxes. There ain't nothing we can do about it. You know, you could do this. You could do that. He won't listen to nobody. You know, look at that. That's Trump with his arms crossed. He ain't listening to nobody. They can tell him things and he, he can say, okay, okay, okay. I, I, I'll go with that. And he'll go with it for five minutes and then he'll change his mind, you know. So, yeah. So this is... The hanged man, it's below his situation. When we see the hanged man, we know that uh, that Trump is starting to see things aren't going his way anymore. He's getting a new perspective on things. He can see, you know, what's what's happening. He knows what's coming. He really, really does. 
and uh, I don't think he's enjoying it too much. You know, he he is trying to hang in there as long as he can. He thinks if uh, the economy is looking good and everything, did you hear what he said? Uh, you, you're gonna you have even if you don't like me, you have to vote for me. You got to because you know the economy's so good because it's all me. I'm a I'm all that in a bag of chips. So you got to vote for me. Can you believe he said that? I mean, really, really. Yeah, but he he sees it coming. He's getting a new perspective. He sees you know that his uh, approval ratings are way way down. So he's seeing things. He really is. He's getting a different perspective on things. He can see the handwriting on the wall. All right, this is the Eight of Cups. This is in his past position. Uh, you know, when this is how this is Trump's M.O. When things don't go his way, he just walks away. You know, he walks away. He trashes people. He walks away from people. He likes you one day. The next day he doesn't. That's just his M.O. Um, you know. And and the things that he says he's going to do one day, he's going to do them. I'm going to I'm going to have the best health care for everybody, everybody, everybody. What did he do? Nothing, nothing. He wanted to take away Obamacare and replace it with nothing nothing. And he couldn't. So he's just walked away from that. He don't even talk about it anymore, you know. And then all the people that he's trashed that have worked in his administration, you know, General Kelly, uh, Jeff Sessions, Rex Tillerson, Rosenstein. There's many, 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 you know, that's just a few. Uh, that Kristen Nielsen, er, there's so many different people. He just, you know, he likes you one day, the next day he don't. He just walks away. That's that's his M.O. He uses people, you know. I don't think he really likes anybody. I really don't. So what's going to happen this September? Well, I think he's starting to fall ill. This is his out, uh, his future card. This is Eight of Pentacles. So he's still going to have his rallies. He's still going to be working, y'all. He still is, you know, thinking, I'm, I'm going to get reelected. He's getting a new perspective, but he hadn't completely come to that conclusion yet. He might have to wait till all the votes are in for him to figure out you're not getting him reelected. But right now, he is still going to work hard to be reelected. That's what he's thinking about. That's what he's working on. That's what he wants. And uh, we're going to see a lot more rallies. He's going to keep going. He's coming on strong, y'all. So for this September, even though he's, you know, thing, his blood pressure's getting up there, he's not feeling well, but he's still going to start, he's still working, 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 still doing his rallies, still acting like he's the man, you know? So, okay, so that's what's going on for Trump for this September. Uh, it looks like maybe November that we'll really see some movement coming as far as the yucky looking pumpkin that I saw. <laughs> Okay, guys, so you know I was in Colorado, and we had a great time. We, um, of course, the first day we went up Pikes Peak. It was so nice and cool, y'all. I don't really care going up high up on the mountains like that. My husband loves it. He just absolutely loves it. I feel um, a little bit of altitude sickness when we go up that high, and I feel real shaky, you know, and I can't, I don't feel like I can breathe. And I, if I sit down in one place, I'm okay. But we start walking around and he likes to just go walk all around and go this way and that way. And I'm just like, slow down, <laughs> you know. And of course, that's the first thing he wanted to go do is Pikes Peak the first day that we got there. You know, the next day we got up, we drove there. It was a 15 hour drive. We drove there and uh, my husband, he is such a good driver. He can drive. I mean, I don't know how he does it. I'll drive for an hour and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so sleepy. I want to go to sleep, you know, I, it just like hypnotizes me. I don't know what's wrong with me. So he drove. He was great. I did drive for him. I'm, I'm a relief driver, but I just feel like I'm doing a favor. <laughs> I'm like a kid, you know, I'm an old kid. So he said uh, what we were um, two hours from Dumas, Texas, almost to the border of um I guess Mexico. We're real close, pretty close to Mexico. And he said, do you want to drive for me for a little bit? And I said, sure, I'll do. I'll drive. Are you tired? He said, yeah, I'm kind of tired. I said, all right, I'll drive. 
So I get behind the wheel, pull over. I start driving. I drive. I'm just driving. He lays back. He played with his phone for a little bit. Then he laid back. And he laid back in his seat for like an hour and 20 minutes. And I'm just driving along. I'm good. I'm just like, I don't speed. You know, I go 75 and I might go up to like maybe 80 and then come back down to 75. But I never go past 80. And I don't ever stay on 80. So I, I don't want to get a ticket. So I'm, I'm very careful. I'm watching my speed and everything. I'm doing really good. So he gets up and he goes, well, how's your gas situation? And I'm like, my gas situation? What? I have to put gas in the car? <laughs> and I look at the tank and it has one eighth of a tank in it. I'm like, it's not very good. And he's like, what do you mean it's not very good? I go, it's not good. I'm like, you're in charge of the car. I'm the relief driver. We were um, 44 miles from Dumas, Texas. We were in a Toyota Sequoia that gets about 15 miles a gallon. <laughs> I was sweating bullets. <laughs> I was like, please, God, please, Spirit, please let us get to the gas station. Our phones were not working at that time. It was a real dead area. It was a very desolate road. It's dead. And we had T-Mobile, y'all. I had AT&T. We went to T-Mobile. I'm sorry. T-Mobile is the shit. It's the shit. I hate it. It would not work anywhere. I couldn't even watch a video. I could not play any YouTube videos in the car on my phone at all since I've gotten a T-Mobile. We got back home. We switched it back to AT&T. I love you. And everything works again just fine. But anyway, we had no service. If we would have ran out of gas... We would have been stuck on the side of the road until somebody was just kind enough to stop. <laughs> and it would have been all my fault, you know. But I told him, hey, you should have made sure there was gas in the car when you asked me to drive. So I drove for two hours. I drove 20 more minutes. So it was two hours or whatever, 40 minutes, whatever it was. And uh, it was not fun. <laughs> but you know what? He bit his tongue and didn't say anything to me. He wasn't mean to me or said he didn't want to mess up the vacation, you know, because he didn't want to. We hadn't even gotten to Colorado. So anyway, that's me, y'all. That's how I roll. That's that's me. I just, you know, I don't think about things like that. I'm going to my mother's today. Uh, I'm going to drive to my mom's, uh, go stay with her. She has a doctor's appointment uh, for tomorrow. She has a aortic aneurysm and she's going to have surgery on it. And I'm going to take her to the surgeon tomorrow and hear what, how he's going to do that. You know, anyway, my husband told me last night, he goes, you need to go and put gas in the car before you leave. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll do that. So I went, I already gassed up. <laughs> yeah, I'm bad. I'm bad. Oh, and it was so bad. You guys, when I pulled up at the gas station when we were almost out of gas, by then we were really almost out of gas. I pulled up on the wrong side and he's like, uh, the gas tanks on the other side. And I'm like, okay, let me turn around. That's how bad I am. But you know, there's a little arrow. You can look and see which side the tank is on, on, on the gas. I know, but I wasn't paying attention. That's me anyway. Okay. So we had a good time. It was fun. We did stay in an Airbnb. We stayed in, um, a townhome and it was very nice. It was brand new townhome. You guys, it's so expensive in Colorado Springs. Real estate is so expensive. Uh, this guy uh, that had just bought this townhome and he rented it out, he paid $250,000 for this townhome and it was probably 800 square feet. It was tiny. I mean, I don't know where y'all live, if how much real estate is, but here, in Texas, you can get a big old house, you know, for $250,000, you can get a really nice size house, not 800 square feet. You can get a good size house. So at least 2000 square feet, at least double that or more, you know, here. Anyway, I, we were, we couldn't believe it. We couldn't believe it. It's like, oh my gosh. And they're just building them one after the other, after the other, just one on top of each other. They're in beautiful Colorado and they have a little bitty strip of grass. I'm like, oh my gosh, that is such a shame. That's such a shame. You live in Colorado and you want to enjoy your home and there's not even a tree around them. 
I mean, they pulled out all the trees and put up these townhomes and give them a little strip of grass in the front I'm like, and charge them $250,000 for it. I'm like, are you kidding me? I told, I told the guy that owned the house, I said, you need to come to, you need to come and live in Texas. <laughs> but of course you'd have to endure the heat. It was so nice and cool there. It was every morning when we'd get up, it was in the very low sixties and it only got up to like 81 or 82 during the day. Uh, so it was very comfortable in the shade. It was very nice and comfortable. The last day that we were there on Thursday, it got hot. When we went for breakfast, uh, it was already in the 80s when it was hot. It was like 86 degrees. So, I don't know if it, the cool air was just there for that time we were there, but it was 86 degrees and it was in the morning. We're like, oh my gosh, this feels like home. <laughs> I'm glad we're leaving. But uh and it got up to that it got up way uh, in the upper 90s that day. Uh but we went and had a picnic outside on the north side of Colorado Springs. Um it was Green Mountain Green Green Falls Mountain, Green Mountain Falls, something like that. It was beautiful, 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 very cool. It was in the 80s there. It was, you know, so much different in temperature of the south side of Colorado Springs and the north side. So we went and had lunch there, and that was our our last little hurrah on the mountainside Thursday. Anyway, we found a few new things. Um, we've been there many, many, many times. We found uh, Bishop's Castle. Have y'all ever been to Bishop's Castle? On the way to Bishop's Castle was a beautiful little lake. It was so quiet and beautiful. We stopped out there and took pictures. It was absolutely gorgeous. Um, and Bishop's Castle is, in the 1970s, there was this guy, and he started using the rock that was there on the side of the mountain to build this house. And it turned into a castle. I don't think he ever lived in it. It looks like, to me, a fort, like a fort that went haywire. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I look at it. It looks like somebody was building a fort and then they got made it bigger and bigger and bigger. And it is a big structure and it's like a castle, but it's so scary. It's so precariously made. There's nobody there doing inspections. There's not, you know, an engineer there. It's just a guy that made it, but he doesn't ask you to pay. He says you can go and um, walk through the castle and do what you want and explore enter at your own risk. And if you'd like to get, leave a donation, leave a donation, you know? So that's what keeps him going. And that's what keeps him from, uh, I guess, being prosecuted because it's not safe. It's not, I felt so unsafe. We went up to the second level. The floor was just vibrating. It felt like it was going to fall through. It was so scary. And it's very, very tall. My husband went up to the um, outer... I don't know, it's um, metal bars around the spiral that you could walk around. And he walked a little bit further up and I just went back down. I'm like, I'm done. I don't have to risk my life. And I, I don't find it pleasurable. So I went down and I took pictures of him way up and I told him, you come down now. <laughs> I don't want you to get hurt because there was places where there was holes and everything. It was pretty scary. It was interesting and fun to look at. It's, it's good to go there and look at it. You have to be really careful. Make sure you hold on to things. And uh, the stairs leading down were so, so steep. So scary. I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm going back down. I just went up to one level. So I'm a chicken. What can I say? But we had a good time. That was fun to do. We went to Cripple Creek um, to the casino. I don't really like gambling, but we went there and we maybe gambled $50 for nothing. You just put the money in and watch it go down. <laughs> I don't like gambling. And we went to uh, Cannon City um, to uh, to the bridge. What's it called? It's escaping me. Um, we've been there so many times, too. And we found we found the best place to eat. They had these, it's big big burger world. I think it was, they had burgers that were like this big, this big. 
and it, they were so good. I ate the whole thing, but I didn't eat French fries, but I ate the whole burger and I didn't eat dinner that night. I, that was enough for me. I'm like, I'm not going back fatter than ever. I am though. I tried to control myself, but I still gained weight. My husband didn't gain a pound. It's so annoying. But two times I didn't let us eat dinner. And that was one night he said, you're making me go to bed hungry. And I'm like, I'm sorry. That was too much food. And then another night I made him go to bed hungry too. <laughs> but he, he didn't go to bed hungry. He had grapes and stuff like that. We had fruit, you know, but we didn't have a dinner. So I would rather, I call it dinner. I like to have a late lunch and then just eat some fruit at night. That doesn't always work out. Okay, guys, I have just talked too much. It's 30 minutes long. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, guys, I'm going to let you go. I have to go to my mother, so I might not see you for a few more days, okay? Love you guys. Thank you so much for all your messages. I appreciate them so much. Look down below in the description box if you'd like to contact me for a reading, okay? There's still $25 until the end of September. Love you guys. Y'all take care. Do something kind for somebody. It'll always come back to you. Bye for now.